Good morning. I'm Scott Redley, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Alex Deal with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Apparently, it's Color Coordination Day. Yes. <laughs> so let's hope that that's good for the market. So markets had an easy bounce on Wednesday. Futures are pointing higher again today. Does that mean that the rally we're seeing is going to build? That's a question that all market participants must ask themselves now, because when we came in, Monday was that last move lower. We went from about 1370 all the way down to the 50-day moving average. So on Tuesday, we're like, what we want to see is we want to see it slice the 50-day. That's a good area to cover your shorts, considering 1370 to 1320, 50 handles. That's the prudent area to see what type of balance we could have. And then we reversed on Tuesday. With that reversal, yeah. we talked about key stocks that acted well, that led the market while the indices were making new lows. So then yesterday, we had a nice, powerful up move, about 12, 13 handles. And now today, we're up a little bit. So now all the easy moves are done. Now the market really needs to prove what it's going to do so you could actually get involved for the next direction. So what's that key resistance area that we're going to bump up against now? Well, I see a new pattern in the S&P right now that I want to show you. I see a descending channel which typically gets broken to the upside. If you take a real quick look here, sometimes I like to do the anatomy of the S&Ps from where we were in August all the way to the killing of Osama bin Laden to this little 4% correction. That's all it was, was a 4% correction. So now if you take a closer look here, you know, so you could definitely you know, get in there. This was you know, the break of the 50-day where we came back above, and now you're seeing a very tight downtrend here. After a hold, whoops, after holding this recent time, remember we broke this downtrend? Nice move. Well, here we are again. So I think you have to look at this 1348 to 1352. Mm -hmm. If we could get above there and hold there and we see some of these leading stocks continue to build these higher level consolidations and start breaking out to new highs, I got to believe the indices will follow and will be at new highs at some point, you know, maybe this summer even. You know what's interesting in that big run-up that you just showed on the chart is that it corresponded with when rumors of QE2 started flying around, and now we're wrapping it up. Right. So, I mean, obviously we we're, might not sell off all the way down to that level, but, but that's a very interesting correlation, don't you think? It is, and, and right now what's good is that the market knows when it's going to end. Everyone has enough mm -hmm. time in order to figure out what they need to maneuver moving forward just in case. So at this point, we've discounted some of this last move, so we're not at the highs going into the end of QE2. So now at this point, we could see if the market could actually hold on its own when right. that artificial bid leaves. Maybe you know, the economy is good enough to be off life support system, and then we could just gradually go higher, not blast off, but continue to have constructive action like we've been seeing lately. And when we break either way, is that move going to be big? Well, that's, again, that's another question. You never know how big the move is going to be until it happens. Same way when we pulled off the highs, People didn't know. Are we only going to be 4% off the highs, or will it be 10 to 15? Mm -hmm. That guy you were talking to Mark said Governor, what? Yeah. Uh, 15 to 20% <laughs> off the S&P, yeah. yeah. But you know what? We held the 50-day. We could have easily closed below it. Stocks could have deteriorated further. But you know what? We broke the 50-day, came above it, very constructive. That's a 4% correction. Now we need to measure the move to see what's next. 